Welcome back to the third and final segment of Industry Watch, where we just want to wrap things up in a tight little bow by talking about harvesting, packaging, and distribution. I'm joined once again by the co-founder of VitaGrow, Keith. As we were going through some of the greenhouses, I just have to mention, I noticed that they are these black and white tiny boxes that are hanging from the, and there has been talk, I'm assuming, that hydroponics also works with technology. Have you done something similar? And is this what these tiny little boxes represent? Uh, thank you, Rumi. So, um, <coughs> yeah, good question, that one. So, as you've read, I'm sure, hydroponics uh, has the opportunity to use a lot of technology. There's a lot of uh, technological advancements happening now in the agrotech space, right, where we use technology in order to enhance our farming practices. So hydroponics is no different, and Vitagro is no different. What we've done is uh, we have partnered with a local telecoms company called Telco. So what we are doing with Telco is we are developing an in-house technological solution for our hydroponic uh, grow houses. What it does is uh, we've put a lot of sensors, as you've mentioned, in each greenhouse that measure uh, chosen variables that we think are very important uh, to the growth of the crop. Mm -hmm. Some of these variables are like temperature, uh, humidity, water temperature, um, the nutrient levels, uh, and things like that, right? So with these variables, what we are doing is we are measuring them, and you can actually see them uh, on a dashboard, on be your laptop or phone, remotely, wherever you are. So this first stage that we are rolling out is going to help us to understand better uh, <coughs> the conditions uh, that each crop that we grow needs, right? So that we can then work at automating further to in order to replicate uh, that throughout the year. For example, I'll give you an example. With, uh, right now we are in an English cucumber greenhouse, right? Mm -hmm. English cucumbers grow better. They grow best between a temperature range of 21 to 24 degrees Celsius. But in summertime, for example, this greenhouse can reach anywhere between 35 degrees to even 40 degrees if it gets too hot, right? Mm -hmm. What that does is it slows down the growth of the crop and then it, you know, uh, it messes with the production of the crop. So in an ideal world, if you want to farm 365 days a, a year, you would need to, <coughs> to create that environment, uh, that temperature range between 21 to 24 degrees Celsius. So what we would do now is we would pinpoint uh, that exact temperature that we want and then we would add climate control in here things like fans uh, you know or air cons if need be mm -hmm. so that throughout the year whether it's too cold we will uh, you know uh, increase the heat a bit mm -hmm. or if it's too hot we'll decrease the heat a bit so that we can farm the same crop 365 days a year and have better production and then the final stage is going to be different things as i mentioned in the other greenhouse mm -hmm. how we measure our nutrients our pH levels, right? Uh, we're going to create also an in-house fighter grow uh, nutrient auto-dosing system okay. so that we automate as much as we can. And one would ask, why do you need automation in, uh, mm. you know, in, <laughs> in farming and things like that, right? Mm -hmm. But one of the major issues that happen with traditional farming is we leave a lot to chance, mm -hmm. I feel, right? So, for example, if a farmer comes and then plants his maize there, right, most of the time he's going to wait for the rains. Mm -hmm. Right, and sometimes the rains don't come or they're too little or they're too much, right? And that will then mess with your crop, right? Mm -hmm. But with hydroponics and at Phytogrow, what we try to do is we try to be more certain about the crops we plant, the yields we get, and the quality we get, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so that if we say, look, we are planting in this greenhouse, we will then know that, okay, if we, because we've now uh, <coughs> controlled as much variables as we can, uh, we would expect to get, you know, 2,500 cucumbers from this greenhouse, for example and our figure is going to be a lot closer to that and that would help us in terms of our business and also in terms of our customers who are waiting for our produce. So we believe that technology is the next big thing that's going to be used uh, you know, in, in farming and that's going to help farmers attain better yields and have better predict predictability of uh, farming trends. I just had to make sure that I ask what are the black boxes all about? It's interesting that you have talked about technology, you have talked about how you simulate um, uh, the systems in the greenhouse. So now I want to talk harvest. Yeah. With the greenhouses that we have visited today, the harvesting process, how do you go about it? How do you achieve it? How do, we, how do you also go to the packaging stage? 
and how do you also do or handle your distribution? Okay, so what happens is uh, with our production, right, we grow exactly what our clients want, right? So uh, as we mentioned, we are within, all our clients are within a 15 kilometer radius from us, right? That's the first thing. And the second thing is before we take on any new client, we sit down with them and try to understand exactly what it is they require and how they require it. For example, uh, with lettuce, you can sell a lettuce as a head, but uh, maybe to a restaurant, right, or to a direct consumer. But then uh, in a supermarket, for example, the most favored way of selling that is a lettuce is in packets, mm -hmm. right, branded packets. You can have branded packets and then you can mix that lettuce in, make a spring mix, uh, lettuce mix packet and things like that. So for each crop, we have different ways that we harvest and package it according to where it's going. Right. So for lettuce, uh, we do heads. You can sell it as one head. You can sell it as a loose leaf in a packet. Right. So all of those have their own harvest and uh, packaging process and also mm -hmm. distribution process. Uh, with cucumbers, uh, they have to be wrapped, harvested, cleaned, and then wrapped uh, for our customers. And then things like cherry tomatoes, you have to put them in plastics or punnets, depending on where it's going. Microgreens, you can use punnets and plastics as well. So we've got a you know, uh, a complex to not so complex uh, way of handling all our stuff. And all our stuff is then taken into our <coughs> our cooler. We've got mm -hmm. a cooler in the uh, in our packaging area and then it can stay there if it needs to. But most of the time we harvest the day that we're going to deliver. Mm -hmm. So there's no sleeping over, there's no, you know, but if there is times like that, then we have a cooler that we can put it in. And then deliveries happen every week, usually Monday, Wednesday, Friday we deliver to our clients and customers around, unless there's an emergency, where we would need to deliver on another day that we don't usually deliver. Right. Earlier on, when we were having discussions about the quality of uh, the product uh, between hydroponics and traditional farming, you mentioned that the advantage of hydroponics is that they have a longer shelf life. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about the shelf life of the products that come off a hydroponic farm. Mm -hmm. What are we looking at when we're dealing with um, lettuce? What are we looking at when we're dealing with, with cucumbers? Okay, so on that one, there's two ways to look at it. So the first way is uh, with hydroponics, because you can actually sell your produce. You saw when we lifted that head of lettuce, mm -hmm. right? It had its roots there, mm -hmm. right? So what happens is if you actually take that head of lettuce and you put it in some water, not even with nutrients or anything, it's going to stay alive for longer mm -hmm. because it's actually a living plant. In essence, we are selling living plants. Right. Right, when we're talking about leafy greens, uh, herbs, strawberries, things like that, right? So the nice thing is if I sell it to you, you're a direct customer, you're going to take it into your house, you're going to put it into a, a bowl of water, like similarly to what you do with flowers, for example, and then that is going to be alive and fresh for the next five to six days, mm -hmm. right? Compared to if you get a head of lettuce maybe from the shop without any roots, that will take you maybe three days before it's, uh, it's gone bad. So already we've got a longer shelf life uh, in terms of our crops. But even if you were to cut the roots on our on hydroponically grown crops, they would also they would still also have a longer shelf life. This is because of the quality of growth. Mm -hmm. Right? Shelf life uh <coughs> is directly correlated to how your crops were grown. So if your crops are grown in a good environment, the stress free environment, you know, crops do mm -hmm. actually get stressed, mm -hmm. right, with different mm -hmm. environments, right? If they grow in a stress free environment they tend to be fresher and firmer and healthier and then they would last longer than in any environment where they have a bit of stress and then they'll degrade quicker because of that. All right. So definitely the industry of agriculture is evolving mm -hmm. and it's coming at a faster pace. Mm -hmm. uh, the manner in which it's changing. Uh, I just want to wrap this up in a cute little bow and talk about issues to do with employment job creation so obviously Keith is not working alone mm -hmm. he has mm -hmm. a team that supports him just take us through um, the various members of the team what is it that they do what is it that they handle and um, how does it all come together the different departments that come together to make up vital grow okay so with hydroponics one of the other benefits of hydroponics we hadn't touched on yet is the reduced labor costs that you would need right because of the space we use like uh, the last greenhouse was 120 square meter greenhouse 
you can actually, that one can hold 4,000 heads of lettuce, uh, give or take, and you actually need just one person to man it. Compared to 4,000 heads of lettuce on the ground, where there'll be other uh, things they'll need to do, like weeding, uh, digging, and things like that. We don't have any of that stuff. So it's easier for one person to manage a bigger amount of crop, right? So that having been said, uh, because of my backstory that I mentioned to you, I am very passionate about job creation, especially for the youth. Right, because when I started, when I came through, I didn't get too much help with, you know, trying to get to where I wanted to do. There wasn't that much support system and stuff. And I was very lucky or very fortunate to come across this venture, uh, come across hydroponics, come across my partners to, you know, to get to where I am right now. So most of my team, if you've noticed, uh, is quite youthful. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, I find it's, uh, you know, it's, it's better for me. Uh, and our company to work with, uh, you know, uh, a lot of the youth and we take a lot of interns uh, from universities, the University of Zimbabwe, uh, MSU, AU, things like that, right? So every semester we have our full-time workers and then we bring in at least three interns, right? That we come uh, doing various degrees like biotechnology, crop science, uh, you know, agronomy and things like that. So that's our small way of giving back you know, to the community as well as do training sessions at the UZ and things like that, right? So right now, uh, I currently have seven people uh, working at Fighter Grow, right? We've got four growers, we've got a driver, we've got an accounting person, and then <coughs> then obviously there's me. Uh, so I'm just always there overseeing everything. So we're quite a small team, but uh, quite effective and quite passionate in what we do always the world over is mm. talking about lean management mm. the leaner mm. the organization is the amount of output also goes mm. higher Definitely. in terms of what you're able to produce now we just want to come back a little bit all those plants that you have here the lettuce uh, the cucumbers um, uh, do you um, just get these plants off some way as you're starting to grow them or do you have your own nurseries? How do you go about that? Because I also believe the plant origin matters when it comes to the complexity of what you're explaining with hydroponics. Okay, so what we do is uh, we also are firm belie uh, believers in traceability. Right? What's traceability? Traceability is basically understanding, you know, if I show you this crop or this cucumber or this head of lettuce, right, uh, there's a tendency where people just you know, uh, for example, spray pesticides recklessly, mm -hmm. right? Pest uh, pesticides have a PHI level, like post-harvest interval level that you don't, you should not harvest and sell to consumers before that period goes past, right? But uh, I've noticed, right, uh, especially in Zimbabwe, there's no checks and balances in terms of what has someone actually sprayed, or what, is they, what have they done to that juicy red tomato that you're going to buy in the shop, right? So... Uh, leading on to that, we also believe in Vitagro, at Vitagro that uh, pesticides are bad. So we don't use any pesticides in our greenhouses. What we use are what are called biological pest controls mm -hmm. or biopests. So we get them in from South Africa and we introduce them into our greenhouses. Uh, in a nutshell, what the biopests are is you find a pest that you don't want in your greenhouse, right? And then naturally in the environment, there's another pest that actually eats that pest. Okay. Right. So you introduce it in here. So that uh, predator doesn't eat anything to do with cucumbers, but it uh, consumes that pest. So what happens is it then creates an ecosystem in here, kind of like a lion and an impala or something where the lions are never going to finish the impalas, the impalas are never going to finish. So what happens is you then don't need to spray in here. So those are one of the ways that uh, we are very passionate about traceability. So in terms of seed, we actually have our own nurseries. We don't want to buy from somewhere. Because if you buy seedlings from somewhere, you don't really know what has been used on them. And you can't guarantee to your customers now that we are giving you a pesticide-free crop or, you know, GMO-free or whichever other metrics that we are looking at. So we do all our crops from seed, be it cucumbers, tomatoes, lettuce, strawberries. We plant the seeds in our nursery, take them, transplant them into our systems, and then we harvest them and then deliver them to our customers. Thank you so much, Keith. It's been a wealth of information that he has been sharing with us today right here on Industry Watch. We have gone through the complete value chain of a hydroponic or urban farm. 
And it is interesting to note that obviously we're going to try and simulate, but it's an industry that has evolved and shown us that farming doesn't necessarily need to be done on soil. Do make sure that you join us for more interesting episodes. But for now, it's goodbye and good speed.